this is Mrs. Reichelt, and the next video we're going to cover deals with all of the cellular organelles. Um, remember, we're, this is a generalized cell, so not all cells that we talk about in anatomy are going to have all of these organelles, but uh, for the purpose of this chapter, we just need to talk about all of the general organelles. So really quickly here, let's start out with the mitochondria. Okay, the mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell. So really, it's going to be in charge of ATP production. ATP is going to be produced when food molecules are broken down and oxygen is utilized to produce ATP. Next up, let's talk about the ribosomes. Ribosomes are all of these little red dots. Ribosomes are responsible for protein synthesis. And ribosomes are found in two different locations. The first location is going to be free within the cytoplasm. So if you see all of these, there's some red dots that are just floating free within the cytoplasm. If they're floating free within the cytoplasm, um, that means that they're not going to be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. So the second place where ribosomes are found are studded to the endoplasmic reticulum. So let's go ahead and talk about the ER, or I better write it out here, endoplasmic reticulum. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. You have the rough ER. Rough ER is the ones where they're studded with ribosomes. And then there's the smooth ER, which are not studded with ribosomes. So the ER, in general, are fluid-filled tubules that allow for carrying different types of substances. Rough ER, I'm going to abbreviate there, rough ER is specialized in protein synthesis. Whereas smooth ER is specialized in lipid metabolism. In addition, it deals with the detoxification of drugs and other pesticides. So I'm going to start off with a, another clean slate here. Uh, the next up is going to be the Golgi apparatus. This green structure is the Golgi. Okay, the purpose of Golgi bodies is that they act sort of like the UPS or a delivery guy. They're going to modify and package materials and secrete them outside of the cell. In addition, the Golgi apparatus, I better write that up there. The Golgi apparatus can pinch off and produce lysosomes. Lysosomes are vesicles that contain digestive enzymes. So I'll put, they contain digestive enzymes. And the purpose of lysosomes is that they'll digest worn out or non-usable materials within the cell. They arise from the Golgi apparatus. Now there's another vesicle that's pretty similar to a lysosome, and they're called peroxisomes. Peroxisomes are also for detoxification. Whoops, I'm spelling things wrong here. It's hard for me to write and spell at the same time. Okay, so peroxisomes are used for detoxification. Their purpose is to detoxify substances such as alcohol or formalde formaldehyde. Um, what they do is they break down um, into free radicals, and they're going to 
form H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. Unfortunately, hydrogen peroxide is uh, not good for your cell, so eventually you have another enzyme catalase that breaks down hydrogen peroxide into water. So peroxisomes are used for detoxification as well. However, they're going to break down molecules into hydrogen peroxide and then eventually they'll be broken down into water. Let's see, let's talk about centrioles next. Um, centrioles are these spindle shaped organelles and their function or I guess rod shaped, not really spindle shaped, um, and their function is for cell division. Spindle fibers, or the asters, are going to hook onto centrioles for cell division. Um, and that again is the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, that sort of thing. So then we move into the cytoskeleton. Um, cytoskeleton is what supports the structure of the cell. So there are three major types of elements. Um, the first are the microfilaments. They are the smallest. Um, these are going to look a little bit like this. Okay. Um, these are going to be the actin and myosin. They're very small. Um, they make up small um, seven nanometers, really tiny. Intermediate filaments are going to be strong and stable. They help to form things like desmosomes. They're going to be a little bit bigger here. And then the last, the microtubules are the largest, and these are going to determine the overall shell cell's shape, okay, because they're the largest in the structural units. And then we have some cellular projections. Um, Cellular projections are not found in all cells. Cilia move materials across the cell surface. Some examples of locations are the respiratory system to help move mucus. Flagella is used to propel the cell, and the only flagellated cell in the human body is sperm. And then microvilli are the tiny finger-like extensions of the plasma membrane, and they increase surface area um, to help with absorption and actually I skipped over that right here. Uh, this right here, these pictures, that actually is representing microvilli. Okay, so synthesis and export of a protein by rough ER. So basically, this just goes through the process um, that as you have a newly developed protein, it's going to pinch off from the ribosome. It's going to go into the endoplasmic reticulum. Eventually, it'll move into one of the corners of the ER, and then it'll bud off and end up being its own um, vesicle where the protein will be transferred in. Um, the role of the Golgi is very similar in that they're going to get any type of material coming from whether it's a protein or whether it's going to be digestive enzymes, anything like that. It'll pinch off from part of the Golgi body and then either excrete that protein or excrete whatever, the waste or whatever they're transporting um, out of the cell. There are over 200 different types of cell in the human body. Those cells vary in shape, size, and in function. The first type we're going to talk about are cells that connect body parts. Um, so a fibroblast is an example of that. A fibroblast is an elongated shape and it has cable-like fibers. So these, these are examples of fibroblasts. Another um, connecting body part are the erythrocytes. Erythrocytes uh, carry oxygen in the bloodstream and they look like this and they have no organelles. Actually they don't even have a nucleus in a mature erythrocyte or a red blood cell. The second type are cells that cover or line body organs. So an epithelial cell or skin cells are an example of this and this is what each of these pictures look like. 
Next up, cells that move organs and body parts. So we have skeletal muscle cells, smooth muscle cells. Okay, they're all shaped differently and they have different functions within the cell. Then we have cells that store nutrients. So these are going to be fat cells. Lipids are fat and they have a small nucleus. Um, so again, we're just, I'm trying to give you an idea of how varied the cells within your body are. Next up are the cells that fight diseases. Um, these are your macrophages. They contain lysosomes. Uh, they have pseudopods, which are those false feet. Those false feet are enable it to move around a little bit more to try to attack or fight diseases. Sometimes I refer to these as our ninja cells because they move around in kind of a stealthy-like way in between other cells, digesting um, any type of pathogen. Next are the cells that gather information and controls body function. So these are going to be things like nerve cells. They're going to be conducting signals that are moving and um, being interpreted by your brain and spinal cord and then elicto response at the end. And then last type of um, specialized cells are the cells of reproduction. You have um, the oocyte, which is a female reproductive cell, and then sperm, which is the male reproductive cell. So that hopefully gives you a little idea of how varied cells are and how diverse they really are.